Good morning and welcome to this week's video. I am really excited you're joining me today. Today we are doing another 50 millimeter lens, um, prime lens challenge. And uh, so we are here at the Leadville Fish Hatchery in Leadville, Colorado. It is the second oldest fish hatchery, federally, federal fish hatchery in the United States. I'm excited to be here today. I'm excited to do this challenge with only using my 50 millimeter prime lens. Um, I always like doing these challenges. This is the, uh, I think the third video that I've done with the 50 millimeter prime lens. And what I like about it is it challenges me to look at my landscape, the scene that I'm photographing in a different way, cause I can't zoom in and zoom out. So um, I just always find it's a challenge and I love it. And um, so I'm sure that there'll be probably some images that I'll take today that will be multiple images stitched together. So any photos that are have multiple photos to make one image, I will make sure to note that um, with each photo. So there should be some views of Mount Elbert and Mount Massive, so, and some lakes and lots of nature around me. So it's just, it's an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous morning so far. It is like about 6.30 in the morning. And so I'm the only one in the parking lot, which is my favorite thing in the world. It's why you get up early. So anyways, without further delay, I am excited to get some photography going and I'm excited you're coming with me today. So one of the challenges that I find when I use my 50 millimeter prime lens is sometimes has to do with the composition. Um, especially if you're really used to using like a zoom lens, you're used to being able to like stand there and zoom in and out. With the 50, mil with the 50 millimeter prime, um, you have to move yourself around a lot more to find those compositions when you're doing this for landscape nature photography. Because sometimes I see a scene um, like this lake that's behind me, I could see the scene, I could see it as a, with a wide angle lens and being really cool or being able to zoom in more into the waterfall um, that's feeding into the, this particular evergreen lakes. Um, and so that is one of the things that kind of can be a challenge with the 50 millimeter prime is that you, you have to move around a lot more. You may take a little bit more time trying to find those compositions. Sometimes it's just easy peasy. You just snap in and you're off you go and stuff. But I find that I end up having to take more time to compose photos for certain scenes just because I can't zoom in and out to find that right, that right focal length for that scene or, or I see the scene and I see it with a wide angle, like a 24 millimeter. So there's really nice reflections into the, the lake. You just, you can't capture the full scale of it with the 50 millimeter prime, or at least just with one image, with one single shot. Um, yes, I could take two photographs, but I decided not to. I just didn't think that, um, I didn't think the subject was interesting enough to do that extra step of taking two photos and meshing them together. And I just saw a little ground squirrel or the least common ground squirrel that's the name of it apparently, just rolling across the ground up here ahead. It, um, definitely won't be able to snack a photo of it, but it's really cute, it's just running around. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the composition of the photos that I just took of the lake right behind me and, what it, and the reason why I decided to do what I did. So right behind me is one of the lakes and what I really liked was this rock that's kind of these couple of these rocks actually but one that's kind of this one right here that's kind of like a little bit not quite in the center but it's a little bit further away from the shoreline and I like that there was like a crack in it and you just have the the grasses that are along the shoreline and those are really just nice and green the water's really still and then you have a really nice reflection and so what I've done because I can't capture it all in one scene because um, I'm using the 50 millimeter prime is I took two images. I took two horizontal images, one with the rock kind of at the top of the scene um, and then one where the rock was at the bottom of the scene. And so my goal will be to combine those in Lightroom using the panorama um, option and stuff in Lightroom to combine those two images. Hopefully they come out how I envision it. I just, the scene is just really pretty. It's really tranquil and everything. So. Hopefully those images turn out um, and everything. And so I will show that here in a moment, regardless of whether it turned out and I like it or not, I will show you it. So that way you can kind of see what I was seeing. Um, but yeah, it's just a really, 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 just really pretty scene, very calm, peaceful. Um, the evergreen lakes that make up 
this particular area. These were all formed um, naturally made during the glacier period 11,000 years ago. And then they dug some dikes and dug them down a little bit deeper to make it a little bit better to raise fish. And so I believe they were raising fish from like, was it 1888 to like 2001 in these ponds? And now they have a different facility where they kind of raise the fish and stuff. That I think there's trout that they raise um, here at this hatchery and stuff. But um, I'm gonna probably just take a couple additional photos here and everything and then continue on. But I just wanted to talk about that composition that I just took of the scene right behind me because it was just it was just really pretty just and I just felt like I needed to capture it. All right, so we made it up to probably I think it's the largest of the lakes. Um, which is right behind me. And then this big, huge mountain that's right behind me is called Mount Massive. And so Mount Massive is the second tallest mountain in Colorado next to Mount Elbert, which is actually right next to it. And it is, um, it actually has five summits that are, oh, sorry, cobweb, ah. It has five summits that are above 14,000 feet. And I believe it's um, no other mountain in the lower United States has a greater area above 14,000 feet than Mount Massive. So I guess, you know, that's probably how they came up with their name of Mount Massive. But yeah, it's just, it's incredible just how big the mountain is when you see it from a distance and just all the different peaks and stuff. So it is the second tallest mountain. It is 14,421 feet is the elevation of the tallest summit on Mount Massive. So anyways, I did get a couple of photographs, I think, that are really nice with Mount Massive. There's some nice clouds and there's some blue skies and stuff. So I think I captured a good reflection of the lake and with Mount Massive and the, and the evergreen trees. A lot of them these are probably lodgepole pine trees and stuff. So I think I got a nice image over here. Um, and I know that if I continue walking around the trail, I'll get a shot of Mount Elbert, which is the tallest mountain and stuff. So anyways, just so peaceful this morning. And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna continue around the loop, take some more photos and see what we got. All right, so we made it over to the little viewpoint where you can see Mount Elbert, which is kind of right there, right behind me. And so Mount Elbert, like I said earlier, is the tallest, I think I said it earlier, is the tallest mountain in Colorado. It's uh, 14,433 feet, although sometimes I see 14,439 feet. So um, take with it you, what you want. It's one of those two elevations. Um, you've seen it probably in some of my other videos. If you've been watching my other Colorado videos, um, you will have, seen Mount Elbert at some point. I've taken some other photos, so. So I have spent, I spent about maybe an hour, hour and a half at that, those cascades, taking photos, finding different compositions. Um, it's just really peaceful, really photogenic. So I think I got some really good images out of that particular scene. Um, we are actually getting close to my car or where my car parked my car. So um, we're gonna kind of just kind of wrap up this week's video. So um, I really like using the 50 millimeter prime. I find it, it's a fun challenge when you just have the one focal length 
and um, I mean I know it's a challenge and it takes a lot more I feel like sometimes creative thinking to get the composition you're thinking of since um, when you have like a 24 to 70 millimeter um, lens it's so easy to like sit there and fine-tune it with staying in one spot where the 50 millimeter you have to move around a little bit more you I feel like I'm really engaged with my um, with the landscape when I'm shooting with the 50 millimeter um, so it just makes me feel really in tuned with um, my scenes that I'm taking photographs of um, the 50 millimeter is also just the pro with you when you have a prime lens it's uh, it's a really fast lens and it's really sharp and so I always find that I get really good images when I use my 50 millimeter prime um, I did a couple like maybe two or three photos that I stitched together um, today so not as many as I thought I was going to have to do um, and I think it was largely because I found the waterfalls and the cascades and stuff and I just got um, really into taking photos of those so um, so it was a lot of fun today I really enjoyed it and hopefully this inspired you if you have a 50 millimeter prime to get out there and photograph um, landscape nature photography with your 50 millimeter prime so anyways if you like this video and the photos that I took, um, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I hope that you do so you can continue to come along on my photography adventures with me. So anyways, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. It is now 10.58 a.m. So I've been out here since 6.30 a.m. and I'm hungry and so I'm going to go get some lunch. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day. We'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.